Excuse me, little dog. Hi, right, guys. It is an absolutely nasty, beam me up, Scotty kind of day here in the end times. It is Saturday, October 14th, 2023. And so uh, my new fun day when I get to uh, talk about UFOs and space aliens and uh, various assorted subjects. Uh, so since I'm trying to start a new channel, I'm going to attempt to put something that would take 15 years to explain to uh, folks in 15 minutes. And uh, we're going to somewhat step aside from UFOs and, spa and space aliens, and we are going to go into an associated area. And this is the teachings of Carlos Castaneda. Just coincidentally enough, when I was really down the space alien rabbit hole, I also went down the Carlos Castaneda rabbit hole uh, back in the 1990s when I uh, pretty much devoted three years. I read every single word that Carlos Castaneda uh, ever wrote. Uh, his entire series of books, I read them from uh, the first word to the last. I did this three times. Three times. This took me three years and I barely scratched the surface of Carlos Castaneda and I remember trying to explain the art of stalking uh, in a video a few years ago and the laughter I got. So I don't expect anybody who is not familiar with uh, Carlos Castaneda to understand one word of this, but for the people uh, who do appreciate the works of Carlos Castaneda, I can't even remember, I am so sorry, I don't even remember where I found this. This was one of these guys on a Carlos Castaneda website. I don't know this person's name, male or female, trying to explain, among other things, the art of stalking and I am just going to read this excellent excerpt. And uh, if you really want me to dig up where I found this, uh, just email me and I will try to dig it up for you. And just before I start, uh, when you hear the words assemblage point uh, in this description, this is one of the grossest oversimplifications an assemblage point for those of you not familiar with Carlos Castaneda and his uh, glossary. An assemblage point is, for lack uh, uh, of a normy definition, it is a worldview. Okay, moving your assemblage point is changing your worldview. And all you Ca Carlos Castaneda people don't need to start uh, sending me comments. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Hambone. I I'm trying to put this in uh, anyway. I know goddamn well that moving your assemblage point is not changing your worldview, okay? You, you goddamn Carlos Castaneda purist, I'm trying to put this in simple language, and I'm already failing, but we're gonna let this anonymous person uh, try to put into about seven minutes what would easily, easily take seven years. And we're gonna talk about the art of stalking. Uh, which is my favorite aspect of all of the Castaneda work. <clears throat> Take it away, mystery Castaneda researcher. <clears throat> the uh, 
the art of stalking is learning all the quirks of your disguise to learn them so well no one will know you are disguised. For that, you need to be ruthless, cunning, patient, and sweet. Stalking is an art applicable to everything. There are four steps to learning it, which will take an entire lifetime. There are four steps to learning the art of stalking. Ruthlessness, cunning, patience, and sweetness. Ruthlessness should not be harshness. Cunning should not be cruelty. Patience should not be negligence. And sweetness should not be foolishness. These four steps have to be practiced and perfected until they are so smooth they are unnoticeable. The very first principle of stalking is that a warrior stalks himself. He stalks himself ruthlessly, cunningly, patiently, and sweetly. Stalking is the art of using behavior in novel ways for specific purposes. Normal human behavior, you know, in the world of normies, normie human behavior in the world of everyday life is routine. Any behavior that breaks from routine causes an unusual effect on our total being. That unusual effect is what sorcerers seek because it is cumulative. The sorcerer seers of ancient times through their seeing, and we're not going to get off into what seeing means, first noticed that unusual behavior produced a tremor in the assemblage point, or for oversimplification, worldview. They soon discovered that if unusual behavior was practiced systematically and directed wisely, it eventually forced the assemblage point to move. The real challenge for those sorcerer seers was finding a system of behavior that was neither petty nor capricious, but that combined the morality and the sense of beauty which differentiates sorcerer seers from plain witches. <laughs> Anyone who succeeds in moving his assemblage point to a new position is a sorcerer. And from that new position, he can do all kinds of good and bad things to his fellow men. Being a sorcerer, therefore, can be like being a cobbler or a baker. The quest of sorcerer seers is to go beyond that stand, and to do that, they need morality and beauty. For sorcerers, stalking is the foundation on which everything else they do is built. It is the art of controlled folly. Controlled folly is another term uh, that could take uh, three years to explain. There is a threshold that once crossed permits no retreat. Every sorcerer should have a clear memory of crossing that threshold so he can remind himself of the new state of this perceptual potential. 
one does not have to be an apprentice of sorcery to reach this threshold, and the only difference between an average man and a sorcerer in such cases is what each emphasizes. A sorcerer emphasizes crossing this threshold and uses the memory of it as a point of reference. An average man does not cross this threshold and does his best to forget all about it. <clears throat> Sorcerers say that the fourth abstract core happens when the spirit cuts our chains of self-reflection. Cutting our chains is marvelous, but also very undesirable, for nobody wants to be free. What a strange feeling to realize that everything we think, everything we say, depends on the position of the assemblage point. The secret of our chains is that they imprison us, but by keeping us pinned down on our comfortable spot of self-reflection, they defend us from the onslaughts of the unknown. Once our chains are cut, we are no longer bound by the concerns of the daily world. We are still in the daily world, but we don't belong there anymore. In order to belong, we must share the concerns of people. And without chains, we cannot. What distinguishes normal people is that we share a metaphorical dagger the concerns of our self-reflection. With this dagger, we cut ourselves and bleed. And the job of our chains of self-reflection is to give us the feeling that we are bleeding together, that we are sharing something wonderful, our humanity. But if we were to examine it, we would discover that we are bleeding alone, that we are not sharing anything, that all we are doing is toying with our manageable, unreal, man-made reflection. Sorcerers are no longer in the world of daily affairs because they are no longer prey to their self-reflection. And guys, I'm a little bit uh, dissatisfied with self-reflection. I would call it self-delusion. But anyway, you can figure out what that has to do with space aliens. It has a hell of a lot to do with space aliens but you can go spend three years reading Carlos Castaneda and figure that out for yourself. But I got to go before I hit 15 minutes coming up with an interview with someone who has actually spoken to a man from another planet. Bye, guys.